I'm going to give a little story about converting my car over to E85 from gasoline using the existing main body gasoline carburetor and just adding metering block. One of the main reasons originally why I wanted to do this conversion is to see how well the cooling system would react. Unfortunately it's gotten cold so we won't be able to see the effects it has on the cooling system but we will get to see that it works and that it works pretty well. Depending on what you read on the internet the metering block kit works in some cases and doesn't work in others. And I was curious to try to see if I could get it to work on my Holley 950. If it didn't work, I still had my old calibration in a box. I'm going to show you the results and what I did to get it to work as good as it does. First pass of the day, I had a little bit of a driver error moment, but everything felt pretty good. The second and final pass, I was really paying attention to what the wideband was doing. Everything felt great. I ended up letting off at a thousand foot and cold. This is the baseline jetting for the gasoline calibration. This needs to be referenced when looking at the instructions of your new metering block kit. These are the blocks. They come from quick fuel. You swap in the power valve and your jets and follow the instructions, which shows to start off with 10 jet number sizes higher than your gasoline setting. It's helpful to have a complete jet kit available for this. I ended up buying a jet kit that went from 100 to 110 later on. To help eliminate confusion, I changed my AEM wideband from a percentage to lambda. There's a screw on the back that you can uh, toggle between settings. When you turn on the gauge, you would want to see P01 as a startup code. This will tell you that the gauge is going to read out in lambda. Later that evening, I drove down to the local Casey's to top off with fuel. I ended up going through a few tanks of fuel, trying to dial in the cruise tune-up. I drove it to work a couple of times and got an average mileage of around 7 or 8. The issues I started having were when I tried to do wide open throttle runs. The carburetor didn't want to react to big jet sizes. But what seemed to work is raising the floats up quite a bit. In order to balance out the carburetor and keep the cruise tune up manageable, I ended up drilling out the power valve restrictor. I was actually pretty surprised and satisfied with how the car did. For whatever reason, I pedaled the car on my first run at the top of first gear and it threw the belt off. Fortunately, I was able to put the existing belt back on. I didn't have a spare with me. This next run would be my last for the day.
It's a little hard to see the time slip on the left, but this was my previous personal best on 116 fuel. I ended up running that one out and the car trapped about 127 miles an hour. If you look at the 60 foot time and the time to 330, the time slip on the right should probably be better. Just for another comparison, the left slip is from a couple of weeks ago when track conditions were a little better. You can see the difference in the 60 foot time, 151 versus a 154. Well, as you saw, everything went really well. Aside from the throne belt, I had been down to the track about two weeks prior to that. Everything was just uh, giving me issues. I had uh, a spark scatter issue. I couldn't tell if it was mixture or timing. And by the end of the day, I kind of thought I had it figured out and the car was 60 footing really well, but I never got to run it out uh, past the eighth mile. Bolting on this metering block kit, it really isn't for everyone. It gave me a, a kind of a tuning conundrum at times. Um, I ended up, like I said, uh, ordering a jet kit that went to 110. And uh, the only way I could get it to run right is having both the primary and secondary side over 100 jet. And what that did was made the car run really, really bad and rich uh, cruising around. So I fi ended up fixing that by uh, drilling out the power valve restrictor and what that allowed me to do is step down my primary jet size and it really uh, made the car be a little bit more drivable the downside is i drilled out the primary uh, power valve restrictor into the parent material which is a, a like a 130 ish orifice size when i go out and do another drag and drive event i'll have my spare gasoline uh metering blocks with me just in case I run into a fuel issue. 